In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions asked by people like you. They go to our Instagram page, they post the question, we pick the best ones, and then we answer them. And the way we open the episode is with our introductory conversation. This is where we talk about current events, our lives, and we just have a lot of fun. You get to know us, Sal. So here's what we talked about in this episode. We start out by talking about Adam's subscription addiction. He subscribes to a lot of things yeah. and then doesn't cancel them. Mm. Then I talked about a study on the thermal environment and its effect on sleep and circadian rhythm. Did you know that the right temperature can double the speed or, sorry, cut the speed in half in terms of how fast it takes you to fall asleep and double the amount of time that you sleep you spend in deep sleep? It makes a massive, massive difference. I did know that. Now, we work with a company called Chili, um, and they make a chili pad and something called an Uller. This is a pad that goes over your bed, underneath your sheets. It's water. They, they use water, and it maintains the perfect temperature. So you set the temperature on your device. Let's say you want it at 64 degrees. It'll either warm up or cool down to keep you at the perfect temperature for amazing sleep. And we have a massive discount for you. Uh, it's the Black Friday deal. Here's what you do. Go to Chili Technology dot com forward slash mind pump. You can save up to three hundred dollars with twenty five percent off the chili pad or twenty percent off of the Uller. So massive, massive discount. Now chili technology, it's C H I L I Technology dot com forward slash mind pump. Then Justin talks about his dance class. Oh yeah. He's trying to woo his wife. Yeah, Very cool. A bunch of swingers. <laughs> they talked about uh, lion's mane. I read a study on lion's mane and its effect on the nervous system. It actually sped up the the, um, the amount of time it took rats to heal their nervous system. And I speculated that lion's mane could probably help your central nervous system adapt faster to working out. As many of you know, the central nervous system is responsible for the power output that your muscles put out. So... Working on that could make your strength gains happen a little faster. Now, our favorite place for Lion's Mane, Four Sigmatic. Uh, they actually make a Lion's Mane coffee. So this is real coffee with Lion's Mane in there. So you get those amazing results. And we have a massive, massive discount for you there as well. Here's what you do. Go to Four Sigmatic. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash mind pump. And between November 28th and, no and December 3rd, you're going to get up to 50% off all of their products. That's pretty crazy. Plus an additional, this gets even crazier, 15% off with the code MINDPUMP. So get on there and stock up. Then we talked about the Dean Foods bankruptcy filing. This is a company that makes a lot of milk, so they're going out of business, or it looks like. Well, I talked about a study talking about artificial intelligence and how it was able to predict people's death. That's kind of weird. We talked about Beachbody and multi-level marketing companies, the ripoffs. And then we talked about a company called Convoy. It's like the Uber of trucking. And I talked about a study on physical activity and how it helps you deal with negative emotions. Then we get into the answer question and answer portion of this episode. Here's the first question. This person cannot feel their chest very much when they bench press or do incline presses. So we give our tips in that part of the episode. Next question. How much information do you need to know to start out as a new personal trainer? So we kind of break it down for you. If you're thinking about being a trainer, we kind of break down what you probably should know to be a good trainer. Next question. Uh, this person wants to know if we would ever go back and change some of our first three programs. So the original three MAPS programs, the ones that most people do, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, which by the way is 50% off this month, and MAPS Aesthetic. So we talk about what we would and didn't change going back and looking at those programs. And the final question, how do we recommend addressing insecurities in yourself? Also, I just mentioned MAPS Performance at 50% off. Now, MAPS Performance is our workout program that is designed for athletic performance. So it's a full workout program. So you do it for like 14 weeks. Um, you lift weights in it. But a lot of the exercises are unconventional and are great for functional performance. So if you like to work out but you get bored with the traditional exercises, this is an excellent program. If you want to be able to move as good as you look, excellent program. Again, it's 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsgreen.com and use the code GREEN50, G-R-E-E-N-5-0, -E no space, for the discount. How many things you subscribe to? Oh, God. <laughs> 
on the outside, including gyms. Is it Katrina? As, is Katrina it, it's ridiculous, bro. I'm so I am the I am a perfect example of uh, why so many companies move to the EFT model and why it's so brilliant. Like when you read statistics on like the average person that signs up to it, like EFT model, which is electronic funds transfer, right? So somebody who signs up for a, a membership to a, mm -hmm. uh, a gym, a membership to get their, their tanning, a membership for a streaming service. I am for sure the asshole who falls in the category of signs up for it or does the free trial and then it automatically bills You're me. You're the monthly donation guy? Yes. And then yeah. for a minimum, they get me for a minimum of what the... So the average, they say, is seven months before somebody decides they, they, they don't use it enough, they cancel it. I for sure am that guy. If And if it wasn't for Katrina, I would be that guy for years. Like I remember when we first got <laughs> together. Yeah. This is hilarious, right? Funny you, you brought this up. So when we first got together uh, and she started, like I don't know how many years it was before, like, you know, she got access to all of my accounts. Like right now she can do whatever, right? She has my social security, she has access to everything. She kind of manages our all of our backend stuff, right? And I remember her like coming and be like, what is this Xbox membership you're paying for? I've, I've never even seen you play Xbox before. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, she's she like, kept it. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. Like, she's like, you know, it's billing you like $69, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, I have no idea. So after that happened, since then, she just now makes uh, an effort to once a year, probably uh, purge I, stuff. Yeah, to purge everything. Are, did you? Are you the kid that fell for the? Do you guys remember in the magazines in the back? It would be like ninety nine CDs for one dollar, and then after that, though, you don't know that they'd be. Remember that? Oh yeah. Do you yeah, remember yeah. those things? I do yeah. remember those, but those never got me. They didn't get you. No, they didn't get mm -hmm. me. It's the stuff that I really. I. I the, it's always something that I need or want that gets me and I just end up not using it very much. So those CDs that would do that, that would send the CDs, there was a way to scam them. I can't remember what it was. You canceled you get, right away. You get you order then cancel cuz it would, it was like the trial thing and if you if you They send you like 10 free CDs or something like that and then it was like a monthly subscription. Yeah, you cancel right before they hit you up again. It was so, or you just didn't respond I, or something weird. I told you guys about the best this was okay, I think it was in 2000. Now, either between 99 and 2000, this happened. Best Buy rolled out this thing where if you signed up for their internet service for a year, which was like a you know $99 a month type of service thing through them, that you automatically got like $300 cash to spend in the store. And so what, and this for- What for, rocket scientists came up with that? For 24 <laughs> hours, okay, for 24 hours, this was like- uh, people went, it went viral and people found out and like everybody was rushing down. I remember I was in school. So, and I think I was in junior college. So it had to be a like 99, 2001 range. And it only lasted 24 hours. And I have buddies that came up on like $3,000 plus worth of Best Buy stuff because you could go use different accounts and you could sign up like seven different annual subscriptions. But the, the, the loophole was you, you go, you get your $300 cash to store, you go shop all your stuff, then you go home and you cancel the subscription right oh. away. And so there was, like, they lost millions, oh, millions, it's, it's like, in, in 24 hours, yeah, because of that, you know, trying to get over on people by doing the whole... How many free things did you get, be honest? I didn't get anything. My really? I was at school, and my buddies were, like, texting me, or well, this was before texting, so I don't remember, but they're leaving me messages or whatever, right? <laughs> Pigeons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, do, how, did we, how did we communicate? <laughs> how did we communicate with each other before text letters. messages? Letters. Yeah, like, know, they man. wrote me letters. Remember, yeah. Yeah, you to talk I to people's get, moms. I got the letter three oh, days awful. later, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. yeah I opened my mail. Yeah. Dude, you remember, you remember writing letters in school to girls and stuff? So yeah. like in between classes, you'd like pass her the letter that you folded into some like intricate Is that not a thing anymore? Do, do kids yeah. not do, do kids not pass notes? I don't, maybe. They just probably just text in class. I don't I know. know. I would guess. think, I would think they still pass notes because I ask your kids. I would think that they still, I, I was sure, I am sure most teachers. They text, dude. Do they? Yeah, and you know what's funny? Teachers so, don't make kids like put their phones away or or put them in their desk yeah. or like put well, them my in their kids don't have phones yet. So. I, I, no, I don't. I mean, some some schools do that, but in between classes and stuff, you could totally do it. And it's not hard for you to come on. How easy was it for you when the teacher wasn't looking to do? Oh, yeah. It's funny too because my kid yesterday was like, 
I'd crumple up and throw it at people. Oh, that's yeah. how you folded yours? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd fold I'd mine. crumple up throw it at a chick. Really? Yeah. I'd do it all origami. I'd do like an origami like little crane or some cool Justin's thing. Justin's game. That's it, lame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally Justin's game. Yeah, right? yeah. He'd, he he'd is for sure. The, he is for sure the sixth grader that used to trip the girl that he yeah. liked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's like walking out of the ah, classroom. She gets it. <laughs> he'd, he'd put a rock in the middle of it so it flies harder. Oh, my head. Why? I'm into you. No, my kid yesterday asked me if he could have Snapchat. So I was like, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, he, he came and asked you. Yeah, that? and you know, he's oh, like, okay. he's trying to be like, he's trying to be cool about it and trying to like close me. He's like, hey, can I, uh, can I get uh, Snapchat? I'm like, yeah. why? Yeah. Why do you want Snapchat? Oh, you know, so we can text. Yeah. I'm like, you can text on your phone. Well, no, nobody uses the what. I'm like, no, dude. I know what Snapchat's for, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna get Snapchat. Wow. Do you? Do you? Is this? Snapchat. I mean, I feel like the segue to that is the the dick pic talk. Is that? Where, is that what? Comes I had down? a. I've already had that conversation. Oh, oh you have. Yeah. And I and I maybe I went the wrong way, but I tried to scare him. <laughs> you know, I'm like, listen, if it you ever get forever. a so if you ever get a nude photo on your phone mm-hmm. of someone who's underage, you could go to jail for fucking pedophilia. So he's like, oh, oh, freaked wow. him out. And if you ever send a photo, <laughs> yeah. you can even get your ass in trouble. You'll yeah. be on a list forever. Here's a good site for stock images. This is what I use. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make it believable. It's totally okay, son. It's somebody uh, else's yeah, dick. It's somebody oh, else's dick. It's not mine. It's not the same skin tone. This is weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't tan that part. Yeah, you know right, I mean? right. <laughs> it looks different. Just, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Dude, does the, does the changing um, like seasons affect you guys at all emotionally? Wow. That's a deep question. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. You don't have to go deep with it. Yeah. But you know, I like, mean, you know, it gets yeah. dark earlier. Well, it's I mean, colder. I, I get in it. Actually, November is my favorite time of the year, for sure. I thought it was t-shirt time. I wish time. we had some yeah. like, music <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. came on. That's my favorite time of the week. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's my favorite time of the week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. I don't know. I felt, yeah, maybe just because you're just like inside more. And I don't know. Like it, uh, You're not as like happy and jovial. I just don't, I don't like it when it gets dark earlier. Janu- so January, February, winter months more depressing for me than November, December. November, December coming into winter, super excited. I love- Just because it's your birthday. No, it's not. I, yeah, I hated my- yeah, birthday you should, you month. Should, if you knew me well, you would know that I hated my birthday months growing up, so it's not like it was something I'm excited so about. So you hate your favorite birthday? I mean, your favorite month? Dude, you got no, no, a no, no, pony, no. though. I, I, I you did. Don't, don't, you yeah, I, d- I didn't get a pony, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> a, a horse. I, no, I didn't get a horse either. It wasn't me. <laughs> It was my sibling. Ah, yeah, right, my right, sister. Did you use it? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I wasn't big into riding the horses. But I I I've always been a terrible gift receiver. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh that part I like it gives me anxiety around my birthday. Like when people are gonna trying to get things from me, I'm just like, Yeah, I'm ah, kinda the same way. Yeah, don't do it, please. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I don't I actually I'm a good gift gift receiver. Yeah. 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 Give my, me gifts. My birthday's actually tomorrow, to right? Me. So I I Is I, it tomorrow? Well, Holy shit! It's tomorrow to when this airs, right? So tomorrow it's actually Katrina's birthday. Then mine's the day after. So right. when this airs, when thirty nine, thirty eight, uh, thirty eight, thirty eight. Think about that. How, yeah. how bad is that? Good you for have to you, think man. About it. it speeds up now. The downhill <laughs> yeah. slide. Uh, that happened like eight years ago. Oh no, yeah. it speeds up even faster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're gonna, your hips I, well, hurt I could see yeah, yeah, my hips gonna hurt tomorrow. Uh, no, I was dealing with that stuff a while ago, mm-hmm. but, um, no, what I like about these months is I, the weather first and sports, those two things. And then the holidays, I, I do like, uh, I do like Christmas lights and I do like Christmas music and I love food and drink and all that stuff. So the celebrations, I, I like that part. And yeah. so, and I'm also a winter guy. So I like snowboard. I like, uh, winter clothes, so I'm more of a winter person than I am summer. I know you're more of a summer guy. I, I, love, I love nog. I like heat. I like you like nog. Yeah. That sounds like a, a slang term for like getting head. You wow. know what I mean? I like that too. <laughs> Give me some nog. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I some uh, noggin. I, I love heat. I like humidity. I like being able to walk around in shorts or whatever. So when it starts to cool down and get dark, I kind of get a little sad. You know? What I, mean? I mean, my people are from the sun, basically. I'm yeah. Mediterranean, so maybe that's what's going on. Green, yeah, I'm not sure. But it. it it did, <laughs> I, just, I want music for this. Why? why? I don't know. It's, anyway, it it's did. Such a sad it thing. prompted me because yesterday I was talking to Jessica about this. I'm like, man, it's so dark. It makes me whatever. It's colder, and it prompted me to do, uh, of course, what I always do: research on, you know, how <laughs> I love the weather I does know. this. Everything for yeah. anything will do that, right? Yeah. yeah. So I started, and I went down this rabbit hole, and I st- and I started going, getting into um, temperature. Um, thermal environment and how it affects our sleep. It's actually, besides the brightness of the room, 
um, th- your thermal environment is like one of the most important determining factors on how good your sleep is going to be. Changes in your thermal environment, too hot or too cold, they actually make a huge difference. Like I thought it was like, oh, a little bit of difference if it's extreme. Right. No, no, no. Even if it's outside of the ideal, and they, fa- they say that the ideal temperature for sleep, the thermal environment, is between 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. When they start to go outside of that, increased wakefulness, uh, decreased, uh, uh, decreased time in deep sleep, um, even if you don't have insomnia or anything, even just being like a few degrees in or out of that. You hear that, honey? That's yeah. why I like our house at 64. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she fights me all the time on that, yeah. man. Well, there's a variance, I've never right? woke up and be like, it's too cold. Never. Like, ever. Well, ever. so uh, one of the reasons why the, the Uller and the Chili Pad are so brilliant, because they don't just cool or warm your bed. You set the temperature, and it keeps it there. Arguably saved our relationship. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the only- that's, that's amazing. That was the compromise, was- she re-keeps the house like in the 70s, and I couldn't sleep like that until we got that. So yeah. I could keep it super cool, which is funny now, though, that it's cold. She's stolen it over to her side of the bed, mm-hmm. and she uses it as a heater, too. Dude, yeah, that's what I'm you saying. know, like in the in the 50s, they used to just have separate beds because of this. <laughs> yeah. You know, I brought that up. Before. I, I literally yeah. thought about yeah. doing that. Almost got for a shot for that. Yeah, yeah. having <laughs> having separate yeah. beds. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the, every movie and every it, like, TV makes show. so much more sense now. Yeah. 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 Anyway, but um, that's why I like them so much because it keeps it at that temperature. It doesn't, because if you get like a, a heating blanket, you ever use a heating blanket? It's, well, you guys don't like heat. You guys are freezer. Like, I've used one yeah. before. Anyway, it gets hot in the middle of the night. It's too hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or something that cools you off, then you got to- No, know, the, the Uller actually manages your core That's temperature. That's what I'm saying. It yeah, gives yeah, yeah, it yeah. feedback on how hot you are. That's one of the things I thought was the That's dopest clutch. thing about it was once you find your sweet spot, if you track it and monitor it and see, especially if you have somebody who, like if you got all the tools, right, that uh, monitor sleep and see how, how good your sleep was, you can- find that sweet spot because that i'm sure there's an individual variance for everybody on mm-hmm. like what their exact temperature is once you find that that sucker just manages it no matter how hot or cold it is outside your blankets which well, is dope. it makes this yeah. is how big of a difference it makes i just looked up the some of the statistics uh when they do tests on this people fall asleep 98 percent faster when the temperature is just right within that yeah you know that that range i gave you um and they'll up to double their deep sleep so it's like if you ever go to sleep and you you know you get your eight hours and you wake up and you're just exhausted, mm-hmm. um, it can make a drastic difference. If it doubles your deep sleep, you can literally wake up with less sleep, less hours, but feel more rested. So it's like you go to bed, you get six hours of sleep, but you still got more deep sleep than you did. Yeah, before. a lot of times I notice that like when you really hit like that that perfect temperature, like it makes like you you wake up and, and feel refreshed instead of like just like too much sleep. I, a lot of times that happens to me. I'm Inflammation like, oh. too, because when you're while you're sleeping, there's a couple things that happen. Uh, first, there there I just read an article on this. There's fluid that bathes the brain while you're sleeping, and they think what it's doing is it's <clears throat> it's getting rid of uh, toxins and uh, nourishing the brain. Um, and inflammatory uh, markers in the body. If your sleep is not ideal, go up. If your sleep is ideal, your inflammation tends to be more at that ideal state. So that's one of the things I notice. Like if I get better sleep, better quality, I wake up and I'm just less stiff. You yeah, know what I mean? My sleep's been interrupted quite a bit. And it, and it, well, ever since now it's been getting cold. Like so, Courtney's actually taken my Uller onto her side. Because I had one just for for my side of the bed. Why do you let her do that? Because I mean, it's it like <laughs> she's cold or whatever, and the, it, that means way more blankets and all this bullshit I don't want. So this way, it was able to raise her her temperature up. Oh, I and see. And so that was great. So now that she's accounted for, but for me, it's like you know I still have that that you know inconsistent temperature throughout the night. So at some point, like I'll get like hot or stuffy or whatever. You wear pajamas. Fuck no, I don't wear pajamas. He's a big nightgown guy. Nah, yeah. <laughs> he's a big nightgown just, guy. Just nice boxers. I, I picture yeah. him in the, the long Free the flow. long sleeve ones that are you know that's a long like a long shirt that goes to your ankles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why are you picturing him that way? <laughs> hey, hey, that's tell weird. Me, tell me about these dance classes that I heard you. Oh, about dance, earlier. dance revolution guy. Gonna, yeah, man. Hey, so 
I just thought it'd be a great idea. I mean, this is kind of along the lines of what when Adam was talking about reading with with Katrina. Like, I was just trying to like make opportunities to hang out with my wife and do something different, right? You so, romantic son of a bitch! I know, I'm yeah. such a. You, sap. you know what? He read the paper. Uh, he read the the, the, the we ad. watched the Notebook together. It, and then, you know, <laughs> it, yeah. the ad said salsa. He's like, oh, chips and salsa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. No, it's I'm, dancing. I'm yeah, in cheese. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there, there is. There's a place downtown Santa Cruz that teaches like ballroom dancing swing and and salsa and all that kind of stuff and uh i actually like back in the day in high school like my girlfriend and i had taken classes and went to all these shows and stuff and was like really into to swing dancing and i got into that for a minute and was like and so i kind of pitched it to courtney and she was just like uh like all resistant at first but then was like okay because we when we dance together it is like two different like animals like like completely in different beats like it's weird <laughs> well you're a good dancer is she not as good well she's good but like has a different like uh, i don't know like she's hearing something different in the, in the song. <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know what I'm saying? Hey, like, this is the most polite way you yeah. can say she sucks at yeah, dancing she's ever, like, right she hears she kinda, the, she kind of bounces a lot you she know hears the beat like, different i, I like kind of groove with it she's kind of bouncing a lot and so i'm like <laughs> Like we we got to organize this chaos that we're presenting to everybody. Uh, so I figured we get formal training. Uh, like I've been through it. It's it's great. It's fun. You so what have, kind of dance? You can kind of bust it out. We'll do uh, West Coast swing. You know. Oh, you're doing oh, that's, swing. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, don't lie. you totally signed up thinking you're hooking up with another couple? That's what you guys did. I know you did, bro. Yeah, hooking <laughs> up. Was, yeah. I was swingers. Yeah. Oh. Pff. Oh, know. that went right over your head, didn't it? I was it? trying to yeah. stand up next Take time. all the lessons from on it and yeah. kind of go in that direction. Oh, but, wow. <laughs> but actually, no, it's real swing. Have yeah, you taken yeah. any yet? Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, I have personally, yeah. Like, I, I, I've I, learned, and this is like a long time ago, so it would just be like kind of relearning the whole thing. But, I mean, I played in, in a rockabilly band for like a hot minute, and then uh, – I really got into that. That's kind of like, it all kind of feeds into like, I have an old classic truck that's, you know, 56. It's, it's getting like rust and shit now, but like all this stuff I want to kind of bring back. I was into it. Now, did you surprise her with this or did you ask her, hey, do you want to do this? Yeah, kind of both. Like I kind of already had made the decision for us. Like I do that a lot. Um, <laughs> and then like pitch it to her after the fact. And then she kind of like begrudgingly agrees and then is like, oh, this is such a great idea. I'm like, I knew, I knew you'd come around. Oh, what a good husband. Yeah. So have you, you've started, you've been going? No, he said no. Oh, I thought you said you started. Not yet. No, oh, okay. it starts, it starts in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So oh. once see one of the things I love, uh, so much about Jessica is she doesn't dance just like me, which is wonderful. That's you know great. how fun it is going to a wedding? With her, you guys just stare at people and like talk about studies. Yeah. No, we get it, that, or and we get drunk. Wow. That's what we, we sit in the back and we're just yeah, a ball of fun. Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a good life for me. party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's a good time books. for me. Have yeah. you guys ever seen me dance? I'm almost as bad as Adam. It's yeah. pretty bad. I'm uh, bad, I, but the drunker I get, I forget. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. how I look at it. No, I, I, I was yeah. all in, dude. Yeah, I'm my, doing the worm. I'm doing all that shit. Now my ex used to say I look like I was fighting. She's like, "What do you?" So you look like you're boxing. Well, I don't know what to do with my arms. You know what I mean? <laughs> Katrina, Katrina claims that she can gauge exactly how many drinks I've had before, like oh, yeah. based off of my dancing. Really? Like, oh, he's only like two in. Wait till he gets about six, though. He gets really good. Starts with the shoulders. That's what she says. What she says. Okay. Yeah, she goes. And then all the arms are coming. I don't know. She goes. Oh. I don't know what it is. You're yeah. stiff as fuck when you first start, but yeah. once you get about six in you, all of a sudden you're this great dancer out of nowhere. Start throwing <laughs> spins in there. That's hilarious, dude. Uh, I, more studies. I got some more cool stuff to share with you guys. Mm -hmm. Lion's mane. You guys have heard me talk about that uh, before. Rawr. So lion's mane. It's a it's a mushroom. It's got lots of brain health benefits, cognitive boosts. Uh, it's you know it's known as a natural nootropic. But I I'm gonna pull this up. Do I'm you know the gonna... history on that? Like why it got a name like that? It looks it like looks a lion's like, mane. Yeah, it actually looks like. Is it. that why? Yeah, it's I a really weird looking, looking mushroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of these mushrooms are named after the way or or plants are named after the way they look, or after what they do. For example, uh, I believe ashwagandha means horse piss. If I'm not mistaken. What? Wow. Yeah, because it smells. It, like the people who discovered it said it smells like. So they called it. <laughs> See, and, you weren't wrong, Adam. H horny yeah. goat weed. You guys want to guess why they named it that? Because uh, goats were banging each other like after they ate it? Correct. Yeah. They, wow. That's what they noticed. So they called wow. it horny goat weed. Isn't that oh, right? wow. So anyway, lion's mane. It looks like a lion's mane. But check this out. So, Random facts. So I'm going to read some, some stuff that I wrote down here. Uh, research found that lion's mane mushroom may help speed recovery from these types of injuries by stimulating the growth and repair of nerve cells. So the injuries that I'm referring to are CNS or nerve type injuries. 
So they're finding that when they give it to, and they did, they did this with rats, what rats given lion's mane reduced the recovery time by 23 to 41%. That's a fast boost in recovery from yeah. nerve type injuries. Hmm. So here's where I'm going with this. So you guys know how Four Sigmatic has the coffee now with lion's mane. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've been using it. And I've been noticing that I definitely feel, I've always taken, I, I like taking lion's mane with caffeine. I've done this in the past, but now I'm doing it kind of consistently. And I'm noticing that my recovery is seems to be getting a little bit better. And I wonder if it's the CNS recovery uh, effects of the lion's mane. Oh, that'd be interesting. Because yeah. you're not just affecting the muscle when you work out. The central nervous system needs to recover as well and adapt as well. Now, with something like that, do you think there there's benefits to consistently using it and allowing it to build up in your system? Or do you think there's benefits to using it for a while, then coming off of it and using it a while just like you you'd like use right it? Right after a real heavy day that you no, do. No, 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 no. I mean, just like, like, does your body get adapted to it and then the benefits start to diminish? Therefore, would it be advantageous for you to use consistently for a while, wing yourself off, use again? Or... Is it like some other things that I've seen where you actually, the more you use and the more consistent you are, it has more of a compounding effect the on only it? What's your thoughts? The only supplement that I've ever really read about that seems to be a, like, beneficial to take re relatively consistently is creatine. Other than that, I don't know of any science that points in either direction, but here's my experience. My experience with adaptogens and herbs are they typically have a very, their effects typically are felt about two to three weeks in, and then they tend to diminish about two months uh, later. Um, and this is, seems to be true for most things that I've tried out. So I don't have any science supporting this, but I think it's a good idea to cycle. To cycle, and it does make sense that the body would adapt. You know, right. if you're taking an adaptogen, it's allowing your body's, you know, it's it's improving your body's ability to adapt to stress. But once your body kind of gets used to that signal. Um, it'll recalibrate. And then you don't want to get stuck like you do with caffeine where you take caffeine once you adapt. Now you got to take it to be normal. Um, I wouldn't want to be in that same predicament with any other supplement. You know what yeah, I mean? Where makes it's like sense. When you stop taking it, then you feel like shit and you got to... So I would say take it for you know a couple months and then go off of it. Now, Lion's Mane, I only use about a few days a week because I only have coffee a few days a week. Mm. So I'm assuming that I can take it for much longer than if I used it, you know, every single day type of deal. But it's weird. I'm noticing like these uh, these recovery effects, and I haven't exactly pinpointed it to that. But after reading these studies on the central nervous system or on on nerve health, I'm thinking, hmm, you know, because a lot of people don't they don't give enough uh, uh, credit to the the CNS and 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 that's its role in your strength and performance when it plays a massive, oh, yeah. you know, massive role. Speaking of feeling like uh, shit, your uh, your tummy and mind here. Uh, you, you guys familiar with the company Dean Foods? Do you know who that is? No. So they're the largest producer Sausage? of milk. Oh, close, Justin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's Sausage? Just, just, he just got it on his, <laughs> on his mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it Yummy. <laughs> it's, it's just randomly threw that out there. there. Yeah. Sounds like, oh, he, well, I guess there's Dean Sausage, right? Okay. That's what I mean. Dean okay. Sausage. Okay, Come okay, on, bro. okay, okay. So yeah, I see yeah. what I was like, where did he it's get fine. fucking sausage out of that? <laughs> you guys so, don't live in my mind. I so they're the, they're the largest uh, producer of milk actually just filed for bank. Bankruptcy. Why? Over the last decade, uh, they've reported over 38% uh, loss in revenue, which is millions on millions and millions of dollars. It's because so many Americans are drinking milk. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It's it, it's dramatic. Milk is an interesting one. Um, if, you're, if your body is okay with milk, if you tolerate it well and you have good quality milk, it's very healthy. There's this weird myth out there that milk is like bad for you, oh, you know. well i think i think yeah. it's we're it's, the only animal that drinks the milk of other animals i hate that stupid i think argument. i, I think that yeah no we do terrible. a lot of other weird shit too you know <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying? uh yeah no i i think that uh what's happened is and i bet you have, I, and i don't know the stats so this is me just guess guessing you would probably see a rise in like whole natural milk like people that are doing so that so i think it was the stuff that's being pasteurized and you're one percent you're two percent or you skin. mean non-organic or whatever. yeah exactly mm -hmm. i think you would see probably a decrease in that because more and more uh, information has been provided in regards to that and how if you are going to drink milk you aren't lactose intolerant how beneficial like whole organic milk would, oh, would technically it's, be it's a it's a healthy food um, Weston A Price uh, identified this a long time ago now if you can't if you can't look if you're like me I can't tolerate dairy then it's terrible it's terrible for you but if you're one of those people like Northern Europeans tend to have a high tolerance yeah. uh, to milk um, there's certain certain parts of Africa that have a high tolerance to milk. 
um, you can you there it's very very healthy for you. But yeah, but you, even then, isn't there like like some people that have an intolerance can also then tolerate like goat milk, for instance, like that, some different variations of milk. Yeah, so if, so there, it could be like that. Now I I'm not good with with goat milk, although it's a little better for me than than cow milk. But you're absolutely right. Um, and some people can't tolerate pasteurized uh, milk. But are perfectly fine with raw milk. Yes, and that's uh, I've seen more often than not that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Now raw milk has some lactase in it, which is the enzyme that breaks down the lactose, um, and it's got beneficial uh, be- some bad- beneficial bacteria in it. You know, if you leave raw milk out, if raw milk, if you get raw milk from spoil. healthy, no, it doesn't spoil. It turns into buttermilk or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. how weird is that? Yep. Yeah, and that's all because it's. Uh, it's non-pasteurized, which is, you know, and the whole history behind that is so silly anyway. Um, so trip trip off this, right? So I'm reading this article yesterday about this AI predictor uh, computer, and doctors were, were inputting information into this AI machine. So they gave it um, one, uh, almost 2 million ECG logs from people. And the e- the AI machine predicted with scary accuracy people's mortality from that what? so they got they, they yeah because the, the they give it all these parameters and the ai machine was was able to with scary accuracy predict who was pe- people who would die within the next year and people who would survive just off of that yikes so uh, looking crazy as that wow. <laughs> stay away from me did you guys did you guys ever watch that documentary i just watched it and it's been around for a while now I finally made my way to it because my buddy said it's called. Uh, I want to say some, something blood or blood business. It was about the girl here in the Silicon Valley that mm-hmm. came up with a company that was valued at yes. like billions of mm-hmm. dollars. Did you watch that documentary? No, but I know all about her. Total oh, yeah. false, bro. Total false valuation. Billion. Yeah. It was they got evaluated at billions and billions. She was. They they were saying that she was like her. She was getting like all kinds of accolades and nobody checked. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody checked. It was a. It was, the documentary is fascinating. You should watch. She was a good. Presenter, she sounded smart, right. young, you know, charismatic 19. woman. Yeah, young charismatic woman from Silicon Valley. So everybody's like, "Oh my god, this oh, is going to yeah. be a huge blockbuster." They were calling her the next Steve Jobs, yeah. like all this. Now, stuff. Now, what was her product supposed to do? It was so. It was a. The idea was that with a prick of a, a pen, you know, like the blood pricks mm-hmm. your finger, it analyze your blood. It yeah. would analyze. There's like a just a massive test. It's just everything you could think of that we that we would go in and do like a normal blood draw for, wait for two weeks or whatever to get your feedback and everything like that. Like instant. Yeah, like almost instant. You put it through this machine, hmm. it would do all this stuff, and it was a disaster what was happening behind the scenes for them to even be able to do that. And then they were also finding out how inaccurate that it really was. Meanwhile, they were pitching it as like the future of healthcare. It that, was literally bullshit. Yeah. Complete. How crazy is that? Though? Yeah, yeah. That, that that many because here's the part that's crazy about it. It's not just that she fooled a lot of people. She fooled a lot of really smart people. Yeah, because she got a lot of money. These are people with a lot of money. They that's were just right so excited at the potential, you know, uh, of her being young and and, and and a girl and like you know in this this powerful company that was emerging. Yeah, the company was Theranos. That's right. Theranos. Yes. Yeah. And her name was Al- a- Alpha Blood. Was the name of the. Uh, the actual uh, documentary. She's fucked too. This girl will never get, be able to get money ever again. Well, not only that, I, I heard that she, I thought she had some stuff. I it, it, I thought they were going to do, um, she was potentially going to serve time, dude. I thought she was, yeah. she's going she's through. She's like the fire Festival guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, they're, yeah. They, they now, must be in cahoots. Now the defense, I guess the, the way they have defended her in it is that, you know, her intentions were pure. It wasn't like she was, trying to fraudulently like pull and when you watch the documentary you she was co- just trying to keep the momentum going yes right? like she i mean she, her her intentions were pure what she was trying to accomplish and then i think it just got out of control and that there's like you lies built on lies and built on lies and believing that you could finally get it i mean they had this they showed some of the like because it needed to all be completely automated and they were going to they rolled it out to walgreens like wow. it was crazy it was already they already made deal massive deals with Walgreens. They had already started to roll it out there and then patients were coming in and then, you know, to kind of like mask what was going on that they, the machine wasn't working. They started drawing blood again and patients were coming in and being like, wait a second. I thought I just had to do a prick. Like, Oh no, for the test that you wanted, you needed to draw blood. And I mean, they were trying, they were pulling the wool over so many people's eyes for a long time. Wow. But again, I think that, uh, you know, they're, they're, 
her defense is that she really was trying to accomplish it. It wasn't like it was a big Ponzi scheme from the get-go where she was just trying to bullshit. I think she really believed in the technology that they could do it and accomplish it. Well, and imagine, maybe in the future we have something like that. And imagine it. if you're in that position yeah. and all of a sudden you're put in the spotlight. All these people are saying how awesome you are. You're getting all this money. It's like, okay, I could see how your ego would make it hard to stop. Yeah. The momentum, you know what totally. I mean? To be like, hold on a second. Yeah, we're Actually, not ready. Yeah, we, we need a lot more testing Like, while everybody's just like demanding it. Well, yeah, and, and, and to up. Justin's point too, like I really think there was a lot of push behind her. There was right during the, the, this, this movement of us really wanting to have this powerful young woman in this position in Silicon Valley. So I think there was a lot of people that were leveraging it off of the image of her. Of course. Sure. More than anything else. Which oh, is, it would have been humongous. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So the right product. She would have exploded. Well, so funny how agendas like that, you know, fucking, ha- you know, well, that reminds speaking me. Speaking of shitty companies, what? uh, what's going on with Beachbody? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're eliminating their streaming service, I transition saw. Transition yeah. award, right? And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a great transition yeah. right there. I was going to go a different direction, but I like that one. Uh, no, I saw that article too. And Were they canceling their live streaming service or whatever? Like their streaming workout? They are, but they're they're replacing it with something else coming out. I actually just, what was this on? I just read this. I wish I would have shared this. I wish I would have read it right before to share this better with you, but uh I read an article on them, just a whole like bio on the the CEO and how it's re- it's totally an MLM. Right? Oh yeah, that, no, that's where they get the majority of their money is yes, from all the it's coaches. Well, there's there's an element that's in uh, it's, MLM. There's um, the element too where they just sell programs to the public. Well, yeah, I know they also- the, the programs are some of the public is structured MLM style. Yeah. Really? If you yes. buy P90X or Insanity? Yeah, but it, you more than li- most people that are buying it aren't like like most people aren't doing this. You know, oh, beachbody.com. Oh, I want this buy. program buy. Most people got influenced by a coach or somebody on social that's, you know, transformation they and they teach them. Like they te- they teach the, the 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 methodology is they get you to follow the program, take all the shakes, do all the stuff. You and they, they want you to share your journey, and that is your way to get other people involved in it. And mm-hmm. you can make oh, money wow. off of selling them the shakes. You can make money off of selling them the programs, and then you can make a, money doing a downline. So it's not just like coming off the infomercial into like very purchase. They're per, they're they're minimum of their their billions of re- dollars in revenue that these they're they're worth and they're they're making is coming from that. Most of it is. Coming from the MLM structure. Now, I know the program I mean sales alone are something like six hundred million or seven hundred million. Yeah, just no, the program north sales. of that. That's insane. But most of that is coming from what I'm saying right now. Mm-hmm. Is hustling it like a coach is hustling it to. They have like over, I can't remember what the number was, but it's. Either, I think I believe it's hundreds of thousands of coaches. Maybe you could look that up, Doug. Like yeah. how many how many Beachbody coaches exist? It's like for sure tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of coaches mm-hmm. out there, and they're wow. all structured MLM style. And they're all, and that's why most people, when we did that episode about Beach Body, and we kind of called them all out, I must have got, I don't know, a hundred to two hundred or so DMs somewhere around there of people Hate mail, and they were telling me like four hundred thousand, four hundred thousand coaches, Beach bro. Body coaches, yeah. So imagine four hundred thousand coaches, you know, quote unquote, that are out there trying to sell programs, like even if for only 400,000 of them sell three or four. Dude, dude these multi-level marketing companies yeah. are insane to me. Because you guys remember Herbalife? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Herbalife, yeah. which is just shitty supplements. You, a lot of people haven't even heard of them, but that company too, billions of dollars. Yeah. Well, Beachbody's even smarter oh, because a, they have the, the Shakeology is underneath them. Yeah. Mm. Right? So they, they teach the coaches to drink the shakes, go through the programs, share your journey, get up, sell it to others, and also try and get other coaches involved so they can make money. And that's now, how do you buy the? Is it like other MLMs yeah, where you buy, you buy the product mm-hmm. and then you sell it mm-hmm. out of your own? Mm-hmm. That's so funny. Yeah. Such a hustle, bro. And I, I wonder why MLMs still exist <sighs> because oh, they're, people, not, they're never going to go away. Because well, works. because yeah, it works. People yeah. make money. Yeah, people, it's, people make quick money. You know, especially but not if, a, most of them don't though. No, not making huge money consistently. But some like the very top dude. Like every here's the thing. Like this, tell me one. Th- this is why this is why it's smart because uh, I- any of you and this is what and they even teach most MLMs teach you to do this right. 
they teach you to go start with your family and friends first. Mm -hmm. And if you're an influ influential person, in your, like you, Sal, for example, you have a, a lot of influence on your brothers and sisters and your aunts mm -hmm. and uncles. They, they mm -hmm. respect you and who you are. If you joined an MLM, it would not be hard to convince probably five to 10, maybe 15 of your family members sure. to buy into your vision and what you're trying to do. Sure. And, and instantly, just by them buying in, you automatically scale up and are already going to start making money. If just a couple of your family members go out and do the same thing, reach out to five or 10 of those people. So, you Do you know, guys know anybody personally that's ever made a living off of MLM? No. Yeah. Uh, no. no, but I've been pitched to. And my, that's so awkward hard. as fuck. A million times. My, my dad, my stepdad, has literally done them all. And I grew up around watch. That's why I have such a disdain for it. Yeah. Because uh, you know, those that know, I've shared that we grew up, uh, you know, uh, 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 not poor, but we were, you know, definitely by no means middle class, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you had a horse, but not like, <laughs> yeah, 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 but not groceries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the horse ate the groceries. <laughs> Worst case, you can eat the horse. Yeah, yes. yeah. Hey. So. You know, and so I and I watched my uh, my family struggle and and buy into. I mean, I've seen that we've done everything from uh, the the real estate MLMs to the um, you know protein bars to shakes to the energy drinks to the Monavis to the um, everything everything Amway yeah uh, yes all of them I've seen my, my it's my, so great like you remember Step Brothers like th this was totally what happened to to me at like this dinner with everybody they just. All of a sudden, they like pulled out not a projector or anything, but it's like prestige worldwide, worldwide. <laughs> we had like watched this like presentation, and then he's handing out like all this information packets and little things of I think it's either Mona V or something else. And I'm just like, oh my god, right now, like you're doing this now. It was so uncomfortable. It's, the people at the top of them are rich as fuck. Yeah, that's not very many. Yeah, not at all. No, it, no, it's it, that I've known a lot of people no. who've gone it and in the kind the of money's in creating it. Yeah, and I don't want to. I mean, look, the people that I've known who've gone into these MLMs are the are the same kind of people that they want that get rich quick. Oh, they pray, you know? they prey on people just like my parents were. I mean, yeah. they 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 they're easily manipulated by somebody putting out some whack ass study or you know show them some sort of a graph on how they can scale and make money, and they just they they're they're easily bought into that. Mm -hmm. They're uh, naive it's or gullible. Total hustle. Naive or gullible. And all it takes is one person who's driving the Ferrari or in, in, brings you over to their mansion and presents it. And let me tell you, a lot of the people that are making tons of money, they already had a network. For example, there's no doubt in my mind if Mind Pump was like this and wanted to, you know, try and start an MLM, we'd make a fuck ton of money. Mm -hmm. we, we, there's enough, we have a, net, a network of people, okay? Now, if, mind you, we'd also turn off 90% of our audience, but it doesn't matter. 10% of our audience is still a big enough number that we get fucking filthy rich off of it. Mm. But then you would be that you would be that scumbag that took advantage yeah. of that your yeah. network that you've built the right way probably, and then you turn around just to make money off of people. You get a yeah. boat, mind pumps, pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you see those as long cars as on my boat. You ever see cars driving around? You see the big sticker on the you know, on the window like yeah. you know, Herbalife or yeah. you know, Mona V. You're like, oh man, yeah. and it's usually like a like a like a van, nineteen ninety seven, you know, van or something. Back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like oh poor people. Speaking of of companies, though, uh, I read this. Uh, you got, there's another company called Convoy. Do you guys know who Convoy is? No. Okay, so they just got 400 million uh, investment, right? And I think that it puts them up to like uh, value. They, I think they've taken on like 600 and something million over the last year or two. They've been around, I think, four years, and they're they're starting to really scale fast right now. And they are basically the Uber of trucking systems. So going, starting to. Uh, 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 privatize uh, trucking. So right now you have your big trucking, like shipping stuff across the country. Sure. And they're, they are building a you know, Uber version of that. So, so you now, go on an app and you say, hey, I want to ship this kind of stuff to wherever. Yeah, I, I imagine it looks just like, like the Uber version, except for now you, if you're a trucker and you have your trucking license, instead of working for a company, hmm. it's going to be- it's oh, going to be brilliant. Yeah, no, it's very brilliant. It'd be, it'd be smart for you to do it privately now and use Uber- to just you know pick up and drop things and get paid. It's, wow, that's smart. It's brilliant. That, that is, is super very, super interesting. I love in that, that very decentralized approach to mm -hmm. to that business. Yeah, pull them up. Find, maybe you can find the website, Doug. On them, it's called Convoy. It's then they call it the Uber of Uber of trucking. Read an article on them this morning, and I had never heard of them. And I think they're like they are. They're already done ten thousand plus routes, or ten thousand trucks are involved in over a hundred routes. I think I read 
uh, that that they're uh, they're already doing. So it's been in effect, and it's really starting to scale now. So it's something we're going to see in the future. You, that's you can't yeah, stop that. Smart. You can't stop that because what's going to happen is all these old companies are going to they're going to lobby against it because it's going to be competing just like the way the taxi industries. You know, there it is right there. Wow, look at that. So digital freight network, interesting. I like it, man. I yeah. think I think that kind of I think that kind of technology is really really good for the consumer. And you know, at the end of the day, the consumer is going to dictate whether or not it's it's a good thing. So if it's growing, it means it's doing a good and job. And not just a consumer. I would imagine this is a really cool thing for truckers. I mean, unless you're part of a union and a group and you're already whatever established. But I think for a lot of people that are probably getting in that space, the opportunity to work for, for other companies. You know, it's like, oh, I don't just ship for Safeway. Mm -hmm. I can do run something for Safeway, Office Depot over here. I could I could be and picking up different routes on different days, and then also manage your time. Like mm -hmm. I know I have uh, my best friend's dad is a trucker, and you know, one of the things with that man, you're at the mercy of their 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 shipping lanes, their times that they need stuff shipped, and a lot of the hours are are awful, and and at, again at the mercy of when the company. Hmm. needs the, that product or whatever shipped to wherever, hmm. where this is probably going to open that up for a lot more flexibility. Fun, it, you know, what's funny about that is that we have a pretty, it feels like a large uh, audience of truck drivers that listen to our show. All you guys right. get messages mm -hmm. by them? Mm -hmm. yeah, I get, I get them all then. the time. All the time, and a lot of them will use our uh, like uh, Maps Prime or Prime Pro actually to help them for, because they're sitting for so long. That's actually a good. Point. That's a good point. And this is again, I was just speculating that most truck drivers would like this. Maybe they wouldn't. It'd be interesting to hear their feedback. So DM me. I'd be curious to hear. Yeah, if, if this it was is a, like taxi drivers, right? And they're all pissed, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, if it's something that you guys are excited about or something that you're actually more worried about, so I'd mm -hmm. love to hear feedback. Yeah, interesting. Well, hey, uh, another cool study on exercise. This one was actually quite interesting and you know a lot of times these studies come out and just kind of confirm what we've already known but it's good to see the science catching up so the title of this article that i read it was in uh is in uh, psypost.org it's a psychology website is being physically active might be associated with a greater ability to control negative emotions and so what they found was that women who are physically active are better at decreasing the intensity of negative feelings so you know we talked about on the, on the last mm. episode about your filter just like your mental filter, how you process things that are happening around you. Mm -hmm. They found in this study that women who are fit or who exercise regularly, the same negative images that other the other study people were looking at or whatever, the other participants, they perceive them as less negative and the, it was the activity level that did that. Mm -hmm. So just because you're fit and healthy, you will actually improve your how you perceive even negative things in your life. Is that like emotional stability? Well, yes. Is, I, I'd say, is that all due to the self-confidence boost in working out? That's where that's coming from? Like what's... Who knows? Yeah, it what's could be connecting? just better health. It could be better health. It could yeah. be... I would think it would be that. Expunging the stress that you're I, holding on to. I would think it would bit. be the... You, when you work out and you and you first get involved, I mean, think of your client that never really trained before. You get them involved in it. Uh, probably one of the most common things I got back you know, from clients is they're, they're boosting just confidence because, wow, I have control of this. My weight isn't just, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, naturally fat. I didn't, I didn't inherit this. I have control of this. You know, I can make better decisions for my life. I can feel the difference. I think it's very empowering for most people. And I think that self-confidence is probably what 100%. makes you also. I would it. agree. I would hundred percent agree. Now the study didn't say that in particular. I think there's a lot of different factors, but I would agree with you, Adam. Like, the, psycho the psychological benefits of exercise are never talked about. But here you are in a gym or wherever working out. So you're putting in work, you're putting in effort, you're getting a result at the other end of it. That is a very effective way of boosting your confidence and making you view other challenges differently. Right. Feeling you know? empowered. I totally. have control of this. Something, totally. that's something as challenging as we all know that weight loss can be extremely challenging and most people struggle with it most of their life. And you know, one of my most rewarding parts about being a trainer is unlocking that for somebody. 100%. Is giving them the tools to know that, hey, you have control of this and you can do this. And when you do that, especially if you're somebody who's struggled with weight majority of your life and then you've you've accomplished now changing that, mm -hmm. holy shit, it would totally make me, at least I think that was what would really make people look view every other obstacle in their life or adversity that they get hit with differently. Like, 
listen, I had something else in my life that I didn't think I could fix, and I learned how to do it. I put the work in. I saw the return. And it might not even be a conscious thought. You know what I mean? It's just that you're practicing that feeling of overcoming challenge, overcoming challenge. You get the result that you put in with the effort that you put in. So I would agree. All right. Our first question is from Justin Cohn, 805. When I bench regular or incline, I don't feel a lot of activation in my chest. Any tips to feel it more? Yeah, so when you're thinking about pressing with a barbell, um, you want to you want to understand the action of the pecs. And so what the pecs are doing is they're pulling your upper arm, so up above your elbow, closer to the midline of your body. And through that action, your arms are pressing the bar up. Now your triceps and your shoulders are also involved. But knowing that the chest bring the elbows together, what you could do with the barbell is when you grip the barbell, create some internal tension like you're like you're gripping the bar and you're trying to bring your hands closer together maintain that tension as you're benching and you should feel more activation in the chest so i'm actually glad this question came up because i got tagged a bunch of times on a post that a, a really smart trainer posted um from what i could see i shouldn't say really i don't know him uh i looked through some of his content before i commented uh and thought he, he seemed to be putting out uh, for the most part pretty solid information, but I really did not like the post he did for this reason, because I would argue that the number one reason why clients of mine could not feel uh, chest press, both incline or flat bench in their chest, and they felt it predominantly in their shoulders and their triceps is because they're protracted forward and they're pressing with their shoulders and their arms, and they're not engaging the chest. And so the the thing that this guy was talking about, that it, it was... This is the type of stuff that annoys me in our space is uh, he was kind of cracking down on the trainers that cue the state, keep your shoulders in a retracted position and lock it in that position to do a chest press. Now, that's a cue that I actually teach a lot. And the reason why I teach that is for the exact reason of this question right here, because most people just don't even have that concept. They don't real they don't realize they already have kind of forward shoulders. They get under a chest press. It's a pushing forward movement. And so they never even get them shoulder their shoulders back. No, in they're just good, pushing the bar. They're just pushing the bar. And then of course the body defaults to the 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 most uh you know common pattern for them, which is shoulders and triceps to do the pushing motion. And they don't know how to retract, depress the shoulders, then begin the pressing motion. Now his argument was that's a terrible cue to teach clients. You don't want to keep the humerus stuck in that position and it should be able to be fluid from back to front. Yeah, if that's and, all the only exercise you ever did, maybe. Right. But there's a lot of exercise. Yeah, and not only that, but it's it's a it's a it's a high level cue that he he's taking something that I think benefits the majority of people is teaching them to learn to retract to press your shoulders and hold in that position to press, to learn how to then engage the chest properly. Then when you have that, then you can freely allow the shoulder to move from a retracted to a protracted position. This reminds me a lot of teaching the seated row. Sal, you've talked about this before on the show where when I first teach a client to do a seated row who doesn't know how to retract the shoulders, I, a lot of times I would get there and I would hold, I'd pin their shoulders back and I'd keep them in this kind of fixed position to get them that, to understand how to mm-hmm. squeeze the back. Now, when I have an advanced lifter, I allow them to exaggerate the protraction forward and then retract because the lats are responsible for part of that. And since we're doing a back exercise, I want to take it through full range of motion. So with a more uh, intermediate to advanced lifter, I cue differently than I cue with a, cue with a beginner. So know your fucking audience. And so when I get tagged on, on, on stuff like this and people are wanting to have me like rip it apart because they probably contradict something they heard me say or us say on the show. It's not that the guy is wrong. It's And this is the same thing that we had recently when we talked about Eugene's post and we just talked about somebody else's mm-hmm. post recently. Mm-hmm. I don't disagree with these guys. They're, they're presenting uh, science-based information that is correct. I'm just, a, I just, because of my experience, I know what I've had to deal with 99% of the time, and that's not the, the majority. And we're always trying to address the majority, the average person. So if you're a high level advanced client, like, yeah, it's allowing the shoulders to retract and go to a, a protracted position, totally fine. But in my experience, somebody who cannot feel their chest when yeah. doing a chest press, it's because you already suffer from a little bit of upper cross syndrome and your shoulders and your triceps take over the movement, you need to learn how to retract, depress the shoulders and press. Yeah, you got to peel it back. You got to take it back to mobilizing the shoulder like Adam's talking about. And then, you know, add 
add like the the proper mechanics so you get in the proper position of it now we apply isometrics uh through that that squeeze so we're really trying to enhance the squeeze of what we're trying to get out of the chest and then we lightly load so we we mimic the the exercise so you actually learn the proper mechanics as you're going through the bench press and then we add the load as the stimulus on top of that so it's like a layered building process mm. of then being able to properly engage the chest while you're going through a bench press yeah and here's something else that that a trainer or you might want to consider if you're a beginner um, sometimes you don't feel the muscle because you don't have a lot of muscle there and this is, I remember going through this as a kid. <laughs> it's true. This is true. It's like a dick statement. No, no, no. You ever train? You don't feel yeah. your chest, bro. Got a small you, chest, bro. You, yeah. you don't feel your chest because you ain't got it's one. It's probably guy. like concave. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys remember this when you first started working out, though? You yeah. didn't feel a muscle because you didn't really have a lot of muscle. Well, there? not only did you know, it's not that you didn't have a lot of muscle. The muscle's always been there. It's that you've, you haven't learned how to use it. Well, you got to build some of it. To, yeah. That's part yeah. Of the but process. I mean, like, <clears throat> other than uh, uh, a push up or any, uh, you know, bench press bar, where in your life, do you you use your chest like you should? Like if you if you just push somebody, if you're somebody who's never worked out and you shove somebody, most people would shove them with their shoulders and their arms. Yeah. But you would get you would generate way more power if you knew how to throw sp- those hips in there. With oh it, yeah, and, and to pull bang. the shoulders back yeah. and then and then throw so the chest could get involved in that movement. But you just don't know how to perform that. And so yeah, not only do you have a weak chest like you're making the point, but it's because you don't know how to use. You haven't learned how to activate. But yeah, I mean, again, try it's an easy tip. You know, pull the shoulders back, like the like the boys were saying. Grip the bar real tight. Let your elbows flare out, and then imagine like you're going to slide your hands together. Don't let squeeze them slide inwardly. Yeah, don't let them slide, but squeeze inwardly as you're lowering and as you're pressing, and then you'll start to feel. You should feel more more chest activation. All right. Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. How much information should you know as a new personal trainer? I listen to you guys, but I can't hold a candle to you. Yeah, you know, I tell you what. Oh, um, fuck, bro. We th- got two decades yeah, on and you, think about Give who yourself a break. And also think about who you're going to be working with. Now, if you're going to be working with uh, clients that are very advanced, let's say you're going to be doing like really, really hard advanced correctional exercise work with people who have big time injuries or rehab, or you're working with athletes at very, very high levels, you probably need to know a lot. But if you're working with the average person, the average everyday person who just needs to get in better shape, you actually don't need to know that much. You really Mm -hmm. don't. Um, You need to know some stuff, but you don't need to know much. Here's what you do need to know. Know how to communicate what you know very well and stay in your lane. That's about it. Stay in your lane. If you don't know something, be okay with letting them know. Listen, when when I started, uh, I had no no background at all in this. I mean, I had a plan to go to school for Kines, but I was still in my first two years, which you don't even get to touch any of your major courses anyways. So I had no real background. I failed my NSM the first time that I took it. I was a terrible trainer for probably the first five years. But the one thing that I was really good at which was what Sal just pointed out, is the, the ability to communicate the information. And I was very comfortable with saying, I don't know, but I will find out for you. And within 24 hours, I would have that answer for whatever they asked me, no matter how simple you think the question is or how deep and technical it is. And part of the motivation of us creating this platform is to support trainers just like you. I mean, that if you don't have the free app, uh, at Mind Pump Media, and you don't have that downloaded, that should be first because you have a search engine in there where you could put in any topic that we've ever addressed in the last 1,300 episodes. So then you could listen to us break it down and simplify it there. We've got all the free guides at mindpumpfree.com. We've got a YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV, with now, I think, 500 plus videos. We have a plethora of free information and blogs all over the website. Plethora. Use, plethora. use the resources it's uh, right there. To, to go back and present to them. And I think why some trainers don't do that, and it, it always, I always laugh when I, when I meet somebody who who's a, uh, knows Mind Pump, and I ask them if they use these tools, and they're like, oh, no, I haven't really done that. Uh, it's like this, it's the, it's the scarcity mindset. Like people are afraid like, oh, if I refer them to a mind pump guide or YouTube, maybe they won't buy training from me. Like that's so stupid. Like don't think that way. Like you as, as a trainer, they will appreciate you getting the right information or good information communicated well to them more than anything else. Yeah, always, send your yeah. client to our episodes and I promise you they'll get more sessions. Yeah, yeah. right. They'll <laughs> you'll completely get, appreciate you'll get, it. No, you'll get more no it's true. There's, and then I meet some trainers that are really good about that. They totally use our resources and their clients, the, the two of them, they have discussions all the time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
oh, I heard this on Mind Pump the other day. What do you think? And the client and the trainer are always talking about it. Like, use all this free content that we it, we have provided. It's funny. I used to have this conversation. This is a very common conversation I would have with new trainers that would work for me because when they would first get started, inevitably they would feel a little insecure, mm -hmm. a little nervous. I don't, you know, it's my first time training people. I got my certifications. You know, I've I've worked out for a little while, but you know, I've got these new clients, and I, I feel like I don't know enough or whatever. And I'd say, look. 99.9% .9 of all the information you know, you're not going to use it anyway with clients. This is a everyday person. They just need help moving more. You need to strengthen them with basic exercises. Do you understand basic exercises? Good. Do you understand mm. how to apply those exercises? Good. You're, you're, you're perfect. Can you communicate that it takes a long time, that it's a slow process? Does your client enjoy seeing you? This is another big one. Mm -hmm. Does the client enjoy meeting with you and working with you? Don't worry about the fact that you don't have to. the most technically knowledgeable trainers that I ever had working for me. Very little clients that I ever have to absolutely send to them. You know, like I get the one client that would come to me and be like, "Well, I've got you know, you know, uh, four problems with C six and C four, and my my doctor said this." And I, then I would send them to my my rehab trainer. But most clients are like, "I want to lose twenty pounds. I haven't worked out for ten years, you know, and my knee kind of hurts, and you know, I, I'm not really doing anything right now for activity." It's like, okay, cool. Any of my trainers can do a phenomenal job working with you. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in your working out three days a week. Any of them can do an awesome job. And that's pretty much it. Just be confident and know that what you know is more than enough to help the average person. And you'll be absolutely fine. Next question is from JYB9. <clears throat> Knowing what you know today, is there anything you would go back and change in your first three programs? Ooh. Uh, the, uh, I kind of like that question. I do because there's one that comes to mind because we just had this discussion off air yesterday or day before yesterday uh, in the MAPS anabolic program um, in there. And Sal had to like really explain what he means by it because I think people misinterpret it or do it incorrectly. And that is touch and go deadlifts. And it's not because uh, I don't think any of us value touch and go deadlifts. I think I, I've done, I, I do occasional touch and go deadlifts. I just think Considering that we, we we speak of MAPS Anabolic as our foundation pro, foundational program, a majority of people uh, that are first getting involved in our programs probably start there. A touch-and-go deadlift is probably a little more advanced for the average person. So that's the only that's the only thing that I feel that comes to mind. We had I, to we had to I think didn't we lower the reps on one yeah. of the lunge was, matrix? Oh yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, was, was going to bring that up. Yeah, that we actually did go back and revise that and uh, you know change because <laughs> I mean initially it was about like volume and so like we're thinking about what was reasonable and actually going through it and like calculating out left versus right leg and seeing how much uh, actual like volume of lunges that was. It was a little bit excessive. Uh, so we were getting a lot of feedback from that from your average person that that was just like, you know, kind of an overwhelming amount. And so, you know, we recognize that it's like, oh, yeah, OK, like for, like for some people, lunges aren't really that difficult. And for somebody coming from just pretty much a front and back like linear type uh you know type of programming where you're doing everything in front of you like uh you know everything is is bilateral and then taking them into different planes it, i mean that transition itself was a very drastic change for a lot of people so it's like okay we have to acknowledge that and that new stimulus is going to be like exhaustive you know and so yeah we did change the, the rep count for that so we lowered it a bit and then you know people could could sort we, of we every, when we went back and we did read i mean we've reiterated them now a couple times yeah so and we don't we don't really change we haven't changed the workouts too much there's been like a couple things look here, here's the thing as a good trainer you have to take feedback and consider it always <clears throat> yeah now for the most part the workouts are almost identical to when we first put them out but there's a couple you know changes here and there because we we got feedback we got thousands of people that are following these programs now here's the deal training people in person and writing a program to be used online is a little different, isn't it? Like two different monsters. It is. Completely. So there's, there's certain things that I might have put, for example, touch and go deadlifts, you know, they're in MAPS anabolic, but when I would teach them, I'm watching the client. Mm -hmm. As I'm getting feedback from people, I'm realizing I can't watch all these people that are doing it. And so there's some very good points being made that we're probably going to change that. Another one is rest periods. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. Like we put in prescribed rest periods in some of our programs, but I'm getting a lot of feedback from people who are like, oh, you know, I'm resting for, for a long time and the workouts are taking a long time and shorter. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, there's a lot of individual variants when it comes to rest periods with, with clients. Mm -hmm. And so 
it might be better to be a little bit more general to say more like shorter rest periods, longer rest periods, rather than saying you have to rest for three minutes or more type of deal. But I mean, I I mean, we're really yeah. going in and like well, being splitting hairs. And though. for the most part, if if we had to go back and reiterate very much, then we're probably not very good at what we're doing. Like, yeah. I mean, that's part of what I think makes the 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 three of us combined because we're different because we have so much experience with so many different types of clients. I mean, man, when we write these things, it's not like we sit down and go. I can sit down and write a fucking, you know, four day, five day a week program for the next 16 weeks, like in 15 minutes, if I just wanted to rip it out. But we, we go back and forth over a lot it's of this. It's a two day process of just writing yeah. the workout. And, and it's this type of stuff. Like we try to foresee like, oh, well, what if we have a client that's like this? Or, oh, I've had people that give me this feedback. And so there's, there's a lot of that, you know, debating mm -hmm. back and forth with each other. And there was things that were in programs that got pulled out or so, I mean, I mean, I would hope that we wouldn't have to reiterate too much, but those two things, and those are like really simple. It doesn't mean that they're, they're bad or necessarily need to be changed. It's that we've taken into consideration now that thousands of people have done it. It's like, oh, we probably could have worded that different. I mean, uh, one of the things we even noticed too, like we, we do little things like, like the blueprints and stuff and how- Just easier to read. Yeah, easier for people to understand and read and use. And so yeah. I, we're, we're more concerned. I think the programming, I think, is pretty fucking rock solid. Yes, yeah, the and usability. The we, UI is- Yeah, we improve. want that to be like the, the cleanest and, and most straightforward that we can. And so we're always coming back and, and evaluating that and getting feedback from people in our forum and- uh, you know, just trying to to make sure that we're always keeping that fresh and and something that uh, you know people can can just like almost ready set go and push a button. Mm. We, we well, the, the look of the programs have changed a lot. That's for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, when we first started this company, we we would pump these programs out and and have ourselves demonstrating the movements, and yeah. we were on a you know tight budget and yeah. and time, and you know, there's videos of. Of us, yeah. demoing, you know, maps anywhere. We we, we filmed it. We filmed yeah. it all in a house. Yeah. So yeah. we're demonstrating all the exercises on that. I, I, I laid on the couch one time while you were doing like dragon flags. Yeah, Remember to keep the, to keep yeah. the, the couch from flipping up. Or <laughs> Adam, at what there was at yeah. one point we forgot to film. Like it looked four like a exercises. porn set. I yeah, mean, what were yeah. we doing? There were like four exercises we forgot to film, and yes. so we had to like pull over. Doug pulled over go the to park. A park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Adam Doug is going. This was coming back from maps anywhere. I actually did a post on my Instagram about this, so you can go back. And I think basically my post, I think I'm talking about people not getting uh, paralysis by analysis, right? And just getting getting something out there and then reiterating as you go. And that this was an example of that, like Maps Anywhere. We just, you know, we shot, we rented a VRBO and we, we were definitely on a budget even then. It's not like we even rented like a really nice VRBO. We got like an okay <laughs> house, right? So it's right. like not really, not really aesthetically pleasing on the, the video. So Doug shoots that. Doug, as we're driving back home from, I think it was Sacramento is where we did that place. And, and Doug's like going through the blueprints. He's like, oh shit, we forgot these four exercises. We're like, well, here, pull there's over this playground. Yeah, there's a playground. Let's pull over the park. <laughs> I've got my fucking, you know, I don't know what sunglasses. I'm wearing some dark sunglasses. And <laughs> you my, look like a biker. Yeah, dude. You had a big I started doing jump yeah. rope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so yeah. Yeah. That's, but, the, that, yeah. that's the biggest things that we've changed. Yeah, so they look a lot better. Yeah, we changed uh, We changed a lot. But, you know, the, the meat and the potatoes of what, what's in the program, it's it's like uh, we I talk about, I think I even referred to this in, the, in that post is, you know, uh, we spent a lot of time building the engine, you know, mm -hmm. building the engine of this stuff and the, the, the real meat of this. And now now we've, you know, we're new paint and spoiler and, mm -hmm. you know, make make the car look cool now. But it originally... Uh, it was we put, fast as hell back then. Yes, yeah, right. It was, it was badass <laughs> back then as far as its performance, you know, it was great. And now we've Now it back. looks fast too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Next question is from Johnny Olives. How would you guys recommend trying to address insecurities in yourself? Oh, yeah. You know what's a telltale way of knowing whether or not you have an insecurity? <laughs> Is how how much does a criticism about a particular yeah. thing... How defensive do you get? Yes. Yeah. Like, if, you know, like, like if somebody came up to me and was like, you know, you're, you're fat, you know, and I've always been skinny my whole life, I'd be like... Well, doesn't phase yeah. me at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ooh. So it's like the the criticisms that you get that really affect you or like, and maybe they're not even criticisms. Pump someone just makes a comment, but you're really heated or bothered about it by it. Yeah. That's probably an insecurity. 100%. And to that point, this is why when I feel that in myself, I put myself in those situations to learn to deal with it. For example, uh, calves, 100% was been a sore spot in my life forever. <laughs> so I'm now the guy who will even wear shorts in the wintertime. 
Like I will. You're always showing yeah. off your calves. Yeah, I will. I will wear. <laughs> I will wear my my shorts all the time because I I I want to make myself comfortable with people talking shit, saying things to me, like me looking in the mirror, going, "Oh, feeling like I'm I'm gonna get reps, just like anything. I want to get reps." with that insecurity to where it becomes something that's no longer an insecurity for mm -hmm. me. So uh, I, I think that is perfect, Sal. Like you, you, when you can tell that it, it bothers you and then you yeah. take that, say, okay, right now in the last uh, two years, right? So uh, I've always talked about one of the things that motivated me to get in uh, into shape and to work out was being insecure about being skinny and small. So of course, when I go from imagine you know being uh, all steroided up, being a bodybuilder, making it all the way up to the pro level, jacked, looking amazing, and then now going the opposite direction, like I've in, I intentionally put myself in this. I'm not going to try and hang on to every pound of muscle and focus on getting bigger. I'm I'm going to get lean and mobile and limber and and be comfortable with being skinny, Adam or whatever, or what I perceived as skinny, right? Because mm -hmm. the average person probably looks at my physique and doesn't think I'm skinny, but mm -hmm. that's how my brain works. And so I put myself in that, and I can I will continually challenge things that I think are potential insecurities. That's to me, that's the only way I've ever learned to get through those yeah. things is to embrace head it embrace oh, it yeah. for go after Present it, it first. Right. That, that's what I've learned over the over the years of growing up and like being teased all the time for being like, you know, like super, super ghostly white, for instance. That <laughs> that that used to be like something that was just I mean, everybody had to bring that out, you yeah. know, and they're just like pointing that out on me. And I'm like, wow, I guess that's true. You know, and like, I'm like, well, fuck. So if I ever take my shirt off or go to the beach, I'm just like, hey, guys, you ready for the second sun? You know, throw my shirt off and, and just like you got to acknowledge it right away. And then everybody's just like, ah, and then and then it doesn't come up again. And then it's just like, who gives a shit? One of the things that has made uh, the three of us kind of invincible uh, to hate. Uh, on social media or or wherever is that we have a lot of self-depreciating humor and there's oh, not you ain't, yeah you ain't gonna pick on us as, as hard as we pick on each other right You're and not gonna get close and it, and and yeah we pick on the things we know are insecurities of each other totally, totally. we we and uh and the, i love that about each of us is that um, we that's we half the game is trying to find them right a couple of right. assholes we over we, we know that and um and so it's funny because if if someone does like attempt to kind of hate on us it's like you you do if they do they do something that's like not even a, a soft spot it's like it's not funny at all it's like it's a weak it's a weak attack and you can't because we've already presented it we've already attacked it we've already admitted it we've already laughed at each other and poked at each other with it and right. so a lot of that really helps when you're somebody who is battling or doing that instead of hiding from it mm -hmm. running from it trying to uh it, you know avoid it like it, it, take only, it head on it only hurts when yeah. you believe it you know what i mean like if somebody says something negative about you and you believe totally. that negative thing yes well, well, that's going to fucking hurt your feelings but if they say something to you negative that you don't believe because you're confident in that in yourself um, it doesn't bother you at all. It reminds me of when I would hang out with, uh, like pro fighters, you know, we'd go out and, you know, guys would bump into them or say something. Yeah. And some of the most secure, like these are guys that could wipe the floor with pretty much anybody that they bump into. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, Oh, excuse me, no problem. And it, like, they would never threaten. They'd never want to start shit. And it was because they were super confident in their own. They didn't feel any threat. Well, even if, at you, all. even if you do feel it, like, you know, uh, I I just I wrote something that I'm going to post uh, soon uh, on emotional intelligence, and I feel like there's not enough conversation. We focus so much on IQ. Very few people talk about the importance of emotional intelligence and self-awareness and social awareness. I've learned now, like, if something even does sting or it bothers me or whatever with that, is like I kind of grin at it, and it's like, oh, wow, that that's enlightening. I didn't know that would bother me or that affect me. And that's something now I've learned about myself and I have something to work on, to grow, to improve. So when you have those moments of feeling, instead of like being afraid of them or trying to deny them or ignore them, like accept them like, oh, wow, that's mm -hmm. enlightening. I And I, Katrina and I even have this in our, our relationships. One of the things I love about her is, you know, her and I will be saying something back and forth, talking, maybe we're even arguing or debating something and one will say the other and, you know, her or I will stop the conversation and be like, Hey, that stung a little, you know, like, and then it's not her saying that, Hey, Adam, that stung a little, you're an asshole for saying that she'll also stop and go like, why did that bother me so mm -hmm. much? You know, why did that bother me so much that you said that? 
because I know you weren't trying to hurt me when you said that, but that offended me. And I'm now, I'm then you find me apologizing for doing that because my intentions weren't to, to hurt. And then, then you see her starting to unpack, where is that rooted from? And so when I feel like the soft dick comment I got the other day, that was fucking <laughs> epic. I yeah. And and, and I, what was so epic about it, I was like, wow, that could have several meanings that could totally insult oh, yeah. 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 Oh, there's so many layers to yeah, that. It, it was. It was so, and- like, I wish I would have thought of that. And instead of me uh, getting mad and going down the rabbit hole with this chick and you know insulting her more, I complimented her. I said, man, I didn't want to like you, but because you came up with such a good yeah. insult great, for me. Great burn. Yeah, I like you now. Yeah. Like, And so I think you got to learn to reframe uh, insecurities and things like it, that it, as growth opportunities. You just have to be honest about them. It's interesting because as a kid, I was very insecure about being skinny. And then I would hear other people, girls in particular, talk about wanting to be skinny. And I, remember, and, and I would hear that and they'd be like, why, why don't you want to be skinny? I want to be skinny. That's a great, I mean, think like that word meant such a different thing to me, and it was because it was one of my insecurities. So, and now this is not easy. You know, you, if somebody hurts your feelings, right. you want to defend yourself right away, but it takes a set, you, you got to stop. Be like, why do I want to fight back so hard on that insult? Why does that piss me off so much? Do I believe it to be true? Maybe I do. Maybe that's why it hurts so much. And then kind of go down that route. And it's a, it, it presents itself as a challenge in our life. And bo life would be boring as fuck if it had no challenges and things for you to work on. So, you know, when it when it presents itself like that, awesome. It's something. I, there, by no means does anybody in this room not have insecurities. We all do. And I I, and I often new ones present themselves. It doesn't like. It's not like you find one or two insecurities. You think those are your only insecurities. You fix them and you don't have them anymore. Fucking something else will pop up. Oh, yeah. you know now that, especially now that you have a, a son. You know, as your kids grow up, you start to see your own insecurities. You know what I mean? Like, oh my yeah. god, are they? And you have your own insecurities, and they might have different ones than you, but you think that they're going to have the same ones as you. You know what yeah, I mean? I, my, I have a client who's, uh, you know, she's in her mid fifties, and we were just talking about this. We we share a common insecurity, and and we were talking about this and. Uh, and it's similar because uh, she didn't finish her degree. I didn't finish my degree. Um, she's an extremely successful woman and she's a around a lot of people with PhDs and masters all the time. And she goes, you know, I don't know why it is still to this day that, you know, I, I get in a situation and when I'm around those people, I get very insecure about my level of education. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm like, it's so crazy that you feel that way because you're such a successful person. I have the same one. I get in rooms with a bunch of people that have a bunch of acronyms after their name. And I find myself, you know, having to share my bankroll or talk about the success that I've had in business to feel like I'm at their level. That's a total insecurity. And I'm very aware of that. And knowing that it's something that I'm always working on. And I don't beat myself up when I make the mistake. I think it was just maybe a couple of months ago, I was in another room like that again. And I caught myself sharing the success of mind pump or whatever. And I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? They didn't ask for it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't ask like, cause I'm there's, there's a difference between sharing information when someone directly asks you like, Hey Adam, we're, how's mind pump doing with this or that? Mm -hmm. And then there's the me giving that information because it's like walking into a room and be like, Hey, what's up? My name's Sal. So I could bench 315. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Like what? It's totally like <laughs> that, but it like a different, so yeah, I think no big deal, but I, it, it's not something that, um, because of it, I don't shy away from those rooms. In fact, I put myself in those situations more often, and then I challenge myself to to shut up. And just because I'm in a room of a lot of other successful or intelligent men and women, I don't need to peacock and talk about how successful and, I am. And what other people think mm -hmm. is none of your business anyway. Oh, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Life go to, is messy. Go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our free resources. So we have eBooks and guides on there from everything from building muscle, burning body fat. We even have one for personal trainers. Go check it out. Um, and also find us on Instagram. Uh, that's our main social media uh, way of communicating with people. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.